I don't want a man in here to go back home thinking otherwise. We are going to win. This weekend, portions of a highly classified Pentagon document came to light for all the world to see, brought cries of outrage from Washington. The, the Pentagon Times. papers make it abundantly clear how little the public knew of what was going on behind the scenes during... Its main effect is to refute the notion that we stumbled into the war. At the White House, a spokesman said President Nixon got his first look at the secret report when a copy was delivered to him today. This uh, goddamn New York Times expose of the most highly classified documents of the war. You mean that, that was leaked out of the Pentagon? Sir, this is a devastating security breach of the greatest magnitude of anything I've well, seen. Well, did we know this was coming out? No, we did not, sir. I just start right at the top and fire some people. A name has now come out as the possible source of the Times Pentagon documents. It is that of Daniel Ellsberg, 40 years old, one-time Marine, later a top policy analyst for the Defense and State Departments during the Vietnam buildup. I think everybody thought that Nixon had been elected to end the war and was going to end the war, and it became very clear to me that um, he was not. Mort Halpern was working for Kissinger in the White House. In the late summer of 9, Mort told me he's staying in and he's threatening escalation. For once, we've got to use the maximum power of this country against this shit ass little country to win the war. It wasn't that we were on the wrong side, we were the wrong side. It was a crime from the start carried out by four presidents as revealed in this study. And now a fifth president was doing the same with no end in sight. I put my hopes in Congress. I took the papers to the most outspoken critics of the war. Surely they would embrace these revelations and would want to make them public. It was a kind of culture of timidity in Congress, a deference to the executive branch and a fear of being called unpatriotic, a fear of, of being accused of revealing military secrets and so on. And this culture was so strong that even uh, senators and congressmen who were against the war uh, didn't want to do anything with the papers that Dan Ellsberg offered them. It was just staggering. The raw top secret, eyes only documents. From Earl Wheeler to General Westmoreland, from Johnson to Taylor, you could go back and see, yes, Kennedy did send in uh, troops in violation of the Geneva Accord. Yes, Johnson did start the build up before he said he was going to. I remember writing this story. These guys were lying through their teeth when they were talking to us. And here it is in black and white, there's no way of denying it. In one of the most important judicial decisions in the history of the country, the Supreme Court today ruled that the New York Times and the Washington Post may continue to publish the secret Pentagon Papers. The ruling was amazingly simple. It was that proving the need for prior censorship is a heavy burden, and the government didn't meet that burden. The decision was a great one. The story today is what the Constitution of this country means to us. I really have, I've never appreciated uh, what the meaning and importance of separation of powers is so much as in the last last week. This was a firm ruling that national security alone, uh, the cry of national security, uh, does not justify censorship in advance. I wanted to tell you that I was so damn mad when that Supreme Court had to come down. I didn't, of course, I didn't like their decision, but it was yeah. unbelievable, wasn't it? It was unbelievable. You know, those clowns we've got on there, I, I'll tell you, I hope I outlive the bastards. Persons close to the president vehemently deny that he is in any vengeful mood toward the New York Times or any other newspaper. As for fears expressed by reporters and editors that there is big trouble ahead from the administration, the Nixon men say that is pure paranoia, ridiculous.